Nicolas Véron, since you first published a proposal for a European banking union back in 2011, there's been some progress in implementing the first pillars of that framework. Let's go over what's been achieved so far. I think in a way banking union is a project that has to be thought of as a very long project, a multi-year project, maybe a decade. Uh, banking union means that uh, the whole framework of banking policy would be shifted from the national to the European level. And that's, that's very complex because there are many different threads of banking policy. So what has been achieved so far is a, a political decision, which is uh, leaders gathering about a year ago, 29th of June 2012, saying we want to go in that direction. We decide, we send a clear signal that we want to build a banking union. They didn't use that expression at that time, they used it afterwards, but the intent was very clearly uh, signaled. And we start with uh, a project which is part of the banking union, in a way the first step, which is the creation of a single supervisory mechanism, which is a way to say instead of supervising banks at the national level in Europe, we are going to give uh, wide powers, wide authority to the European Central Bank, the ECB, so that the ECB becomes a hub, but a very much a strong central hub for banking supervision, at least in the Eurozone and possibly in other members uh, of the European Union. So that was the decision a year ago. So it took a second decision a year ago, which uh, clarifies the intent of why uh, going to that direction. They said we want to break the vicious circle between banking and sovereigns. And here this is a mechanism that has been become, that had been become ever more obvious through the crisis that basically uh, countries with weak banks became weak, sovereign, weak sovereigns, but conversely also so countries which had fiscal problems started having big problems in their banking system. And there was a feedback loop there that was gradually identified both by economists and later on by policymakers as something that was a big channel of contagion and something that was making the crisis worse. This is not to say, of course, that all the problems come from this feedback loop, but basically the determination that was made a year ago was if we, still, if we don't break this feedback loop, we're not going to resolve the crisis. Uh, and specifically, they said, we want the European stability mechanism, the common fund that was created in uh, 2011, 2012 uh, at the EU level, to be able to recapitalize banks directly. This is a very unclear expression. Uh, it's not explicit in terms of what that exactly means in terms of financial engineering and all that, but that was a clear intent to have a financial instrument that can go directly into the capital structure of banks from the European level as opposed to just the national level as we have now. So that were the decisions that were made. Make a long story short, the uh, single supervisory mechanism uh, is now in the final stages in terms of the legislative agenda. So we expect the legislation to be adopted either in July or more likely in September, but basically it's finalized. So ability for the ESM to recapitalize banks directly is not going to happen anytime soon and certainly not before the single supervisory mechanism is in place, up and running, and this is probably not going to be before quite late in 2014, so more than a year from now. So all this takes time. But at this point, I would argue, even so some observers might be less optimistic or less positive than I am, that the initial vision is being implemented in spite of all the difficulties. And the difficulties are multiple, and they are multiple because of the very strong link that exists be between banking and uh, national realities uh, in each member state. They are different from one member state to another, but this link exists everywhere. So it's difficult to break it. It's not just a matter of one single uh, you know, uh, transmission mechanism. It's a web of uh, intra linkages that exist and that will take time to unravel. You mentioned that we're entering a difficult phase. There's lots of skepticism that the banking union may not be seen through till the end. What dangers do you see? Um, I think there are dangers everywhere. Uh, and there are big dangers in this crisis. And if this crisis was not considered to be existential, for the future of European integration, the heads of state and government would not have made this decision a year ago uh, f to go for banking union, uh, again, to make a complex story simple. Uh, and the reason they did that is not because they underestimated the 
not because they underestimated the political difficulties, even so they might have underestimated the political difficulties, but just because they felt there was no alternative, that if they didn't make this radical, bold steps, then the whole integration story would unravel. And it's still possible that it would unravel, uh, and the step, the radical bold step, is proving very difficult to implement, and will have a very difficult sequence. In a way, the, the, the last 12 months since the initial decisions have been the easy part. Uh, the next 12 months will be much more difficult because we are getting much more concrete. We are getting into a phase where the ECB, once it has the formal authority to supervise banks, will uh, have to perform a comprehensive balance sheet assessment of uh, uh, most of the banks, or at least banks covering most of the assets, most of the banking system uh, in the euro area and possibly a bit beyond. Maybe some other member states will participate, we'll see. Um, and this is going to be a very contentious process because basically the ECB will enter into those banks, which until now have been basically part of a national environment and a national community and will say, well, you have a capital gap of I don't know how many billions and you have to do something about it. And uh, there might be some need for taxpayers' money and that's going to be national taxpayers' money because that's all we have right now. And so basically you will have a number of national communities who will say, look, I have this ECB coming here which doesn't come from my place and they tell me I have to pay and this is my money and where's the legitimacy there? So this is an intrinsically very contentious process.